authentic motivation. And then the second one is get to know the people you're doing it with. And day to day, you're going to be training with people. You're going to be competing with people that have similar goals and working towards huge goals as a part of a group and enjoying that group you're doing it with is going to lend you to, to have more success to, and to enjoy it more. So one step at a time and invest in your teammates. Last question, uh, providing you're at liberty to share. What has been the most painful experience that you've ever had in or out of the water that you would like to share to any hopeful, any person in the world to help them learn from you, from what you're, what you could about to share with us so that they don't have to go through it to have a saving grace moment? Yeah. Yeah. That's a, that's a great question. Um, I mean, I would say on the, on the personal side, I feel like, I feel like I've always been able to, to bounce back from, from disappointments pretty quickly. And so I, I feel incredibly fortunate to, to have been able to do that. Um, and, and I totally sympathize with, with the people that, that take longer to, to process and, um, to, to process things. And, and I would say like, so probably the hardest part of like the hardest time of my swimming career, honestly, was probably 2019. So 2019 worlds, I got fourth in the, in the hundred back. And that doesn't sound bad, but going into the meet, like the year before I was like, like 0.09. So nine one hundredths of a second off of the world record. I was putting a lot of pressure on myself to break the world record at that meet. And I ended up missing it by eight tenths of a second and getting fourth place. Like I missed out on bronze by one one hundredth. And so coming off of that, I just, I just realized that I was, I was putting too much pressure on myself. Um, and I wasn't, and I wasn't communicating effectively at all. Like I would, I would have a bad practice. I'd have a bad string of practices throughout the year and I'd just hold on to it. I'd get angry. And, and I was swimming with a lot of anger and that's not necessarily healthy. Like it's not healthy to do that on a day to day, day to day basis. And so I felt like that started seeping into to other parts of my personality. I just, I didn't necessarily like who I was, I like who I was as a person that year. I felt pretty self-absorbed and, and that I think came from the swimming. And so coming off of, coming off of that summer, I, I really made a commitment to myself to to communicate as clearly as possible to the people that that matter most to me. And so, like in strictly related to swimming, I learned how to be really straightforward with with my coach and be like, "Hey, here's what I felt like worked. Here's where I feel like we can improve. Can you please let me know where I need to improve? What you think?" what you think worked, what you think didn't work. Let's have a conversation about it so we can understand where we might have a different point of view, talk through it. And then the the goal is that I have 100% buy-in after this conversation. And so that went really well. It was probably an hour long conversation where we tried to put all emotions to the side, like both sides of that table. We're trying to put all emotions to the side really just be as clear as possible about the way we were thinking about, about the swimming. And I, and I think since then I've had a much more positive relationship with the sport and, and I'm much happier with, with the personality, um, with, with the personality outside of the pool, because there, there's definitely a relationship when you're, when you're trying to be such a high achiever, at, at something. And so I feel like that, that improved my relationship with Bridget, with my family, with my friends. And so I'm, I'm really happy with the way that, that, that situation, uh, ended up unfolding in the improvements I was able to make as a result of it. I like that. I like that a lot. Thank you so much.